with any project, you go through phases. So the first phase, the ideas are big, everything's gonna be great, how hard could it be? And then there's the reality kind of setting in phase. And I think I've just entered that. Day one of the teardrop build, and my shirt is already off. I'm sorry about that, but it's about 90 something degrees here in Miami. And we're just kind of getting the workspace sorted out. So I'm gonna give you a quick little tour of what we're gonna be working with. I just got a little uh, drop cloth down here. Got a whiteboard. Every project needs a whiteboard, just to remind you how far you are from actually finishing. I had to build a little, a little door to keep Bowie, our dog, out of here. Step one is just to get all these boxes um, unpacked and find apparently somewhere in there there's a manual to tell me where to start. This is the ceiling fan. Making progress. We got all the floor parts out. This is the, the second big box. There it is. I found it in the lawn box. The holy grail. This will get us to the promised land. You might be asking yourself, why are we doing this? It seems like quite a bit of work. Well, the answer is sort of threefold. One of the main goals we have at Waterlust is to try to inspire people to realize that they can get out and kind of do whatever it is that they want to do. That's actually pretty cool. And a lot of times there may feel like there's barriers to doing something that you can't, don't feel like you can do it, or um, maybe some type of adventure or a trip or building a teardrop camper or something like that. So we love to, to tackle projects that can show people that if we can do it, anybody can do it. One of the main reasons I want to film this whole process is I'm hoping that this relationship between us filming and, and the audience will help keep us in line and uh, motivate us to staying on track and ultimately getting the build done um, as quickly and as well as possible. So that, that's, it's sort of a selfish reason, but we're hoping that, uh, that you guys stay on us and uh, keep us after it. And the third reason has to do with um, just appreciating things. Um, we found that when you build something yourself, that you have a much greater appreciation um, for it. And especially in today's day and age, it seems like it's very easy to kind of just buy things and get things and then kind of just move on to the next things. And this is a big problem in terms of the environment because a lot of this stuff that we buy ends up in landfills and it's sort of part of this disposable lifestyle that we have. So um, any project that involves really getting down and dirty and building something, um, we really like to support because it kind of gets you thinking about how much work and how much effort goes into the, the products that you have and hopefully gets you thinking about you know taking care of them and getting the most out of them and and thinking about their connection with the with the environment so those are our three main reasons well, the last box is the box that we need i think these are the parts for i think they call it a jig sorry a mold so there is the mold and this is going to be like a, a structure that we use to bend the wood into the teardrop um, shape. So these are the parts that we need first. Before we actually get to start putting the parts in the, uh, the mold, we have to join the wood together. So there's a limitation for how long um, the wood can be for shipping. And so what they do is they break the paneling up into pieces and then you join them together using a puzzle joint. So I'll show you what it looks like here in the, the manual. Very clear. 
I'm gonna put a little bit of fiberglass and uh, epoxy on here just to join them together. So here we have the resin that comes with the kit. We have our resin, we have our hardener, and they come with pumps that are marked blue, blue, red, red. And you can see that this pump, um, they say they have all these instructions to make sure you don't make a mistake. It says just to remember, um, it's one pump of resin to one pump of hardener. And I don't think that these pumps are the same um, volume. So you can see this one goes down quite a bit. And this one goes down a little bit. Um, so these are preset ratios to make sure you just do one pump to one pump, but the volumes are actually different based on the chemical components of this particular type of resin. So we're about to start uh, laying up our fiberglass and epoxy for the first time, and we're gonna be doing this a lot throughout the teardrop build. Some people may not really know what epoxy is or how it works. There was this one class or this one professor, and he sort of explained it to me in a way that stuck, and I remembered it. So I thought I'd share it with you and see if it was helpful. A great way to think about resins in general is that they kind of look like spaghetti. If you were to look in with a microscope, you would see lots of strands of material. These long little pieces of spaghetti are called polymers. And they're basically big complex molecules with all sorts of different stuff on them. And the, mo the two most popular ones are um, probably polyesters, um, which would be polyester, multiple ester groups, um, or epoxies, which are kind of pieces of spaghetti um, that have epoxy molecules on them. The way that these things work, when they're just in a liquid form, you've got all this spaghetti kind of just moving around, but then you can create a bond that links all of the different pieces of spaghetti together in a permanent, permanent bond that becomes very, very strong. For a polyester resin, the way that this bonding happens is through what they call cross-linking, where you're, you'll actually get bonds between parallel pieces of spaghetti. And these bonds um, happen regardless of whether you add anything new to it. But to accelerate the process and make it happen really quickly, you add a little chemical um, that accelerates the chemical reaction. So they would call this like a catalyst. So if you're using a polyester resin, you probably notice you have this big vat of resin and you add a tiny little bit of, uh, of catalyst and basically energize those bonds to happen. So epoxy resin is a little bit different. Um, it's still the same idea as spaghetti, but the way that the spaghetti bonds together is a little bit different than polyester. They're gonna bond together in what they call a tip to tail fashion. So each piece of spaghetti has a little bonding site at the end, and this is where it can attach to other things. When you add hardener to epoxy, you're gonna be adding the material that can bond to your epoxy. Say you have a three to one ratio, your hardener is basically gonna look like another piece of spaghetti that has a bonding site at the end. And say for this one, you're gonna have three bonding sites which means that for, for one piece of hardener, it's gonna be able to bond to three spaghetti pieces of, of epoxy. Basically, the, your lattice is gonna be constructed like this, tip to tail, and you're gonna get this intricate lattice of epoxy and hardener with these bonds coming tip to tail like this. So, they're very similar epoxy and polyester are similar, but they're also quite a bit different. With an epoxy, if you don't add hardener, you're not gonna have these necessary um, constituents that are gonna allow it all to bond together, so you really need it, and it's really important to get the ratio right. So imagine if you had a three to one um, epoxy and you add too, too little um, hardener to your epoxy, you're not gonna have enough bonding sites to make the, the whole thing um, become very strong and solid. Um, that's why when you're mixing with epoxy and, and throughout this uh, throughout this teardrop build, we're going to be focusing a lot on making sure that the the ratio of hardener to resin is really accurate, so that we can get the most strength out of the chemical bond. This is why you have these ratios of uh, uh, two to one, three to one, five to one. There's all sorts of different resins in the world, but um, that's how it works. So this is what we're going to be using. It's a slow uh, it's a slow curing resin, meaning it won't kick really quickly, which is very important for us because um, 
it's really, really hot, and it's a uh, exothermic reaction, so the hotter that it is, the faster it'll go. Um, and so we have to be really careful when we're, when we're mixing up our resin because it's so hot outside. Um, if we mix too much of it, or if we do it when it's too hot outside, um, the stuff could kick really fast. Um, it can even uh, catch on fire, so you have to be really, really careful about your working with your epoxy. Um, always work in small batches. Just do a little bit at a time, work slowly, um, and that way you don't run the risk of it kicking when you're halfway through your project trying to lay up your glass. Um, I've had that happen, it's really frustrating, and it takes forever to clean up. Yeah.